Hi and welcome. Today on the bench I have a heat kit function generator model IG-1271. I picked this up at a flea mall about a week ago for five bucks and brought it home and hooked it up and turned it on and nothing happens so it has no output either either function does not work sine wave square wave or triangle wave so I started to look at it and uh, I found some interesting things that I thought I would share on how to troubleshoot it when you don't have the proper test equipment to do it with so I think I hope you find this kind of interesting here I have a copy of the schematic up on the board and whenever I'm working on something this old it's always good to uh, start in the power supply circuit and the mains come in through the transformer and into the bridge rectifier off the bridge rectifier comes about 26 volts and goes into a 7815 voltage regulator and what's interesting about this circuit is that it outputs 15 volts positive the circuit also mirrors below ground 15 volts negative and testing all the power supply the 5 volt rails and the 15 volt rails they were looking okay the 15 volt rails was about a volt and a half low but when I went to the 15 negative volt rail it was at zero the 15 volt rail comes up and goes into splits off into several circuits so it's not that easy to just pull any component up and check it to see what it is I went ahead and pulled the emitter of Q25 which is the output of the negative 15 volt rail and I do have 15 volts when I measure with a known meter with no power from the emitter to ground I have about three to four ohms which tells me there is something shorted inside the unit so they help troubleshoot this instead of piling it up and trying to figure out what's going on I left the unit unplugged I had a 1.5 volt battery in a battery connector with clip leads on it and I decided to attach the positive here and then ground the other end of the battery this way I can start with my voltmeter looking at the millivolt ranges and go through each of these nodes around these capac uh, transistors and see if there's any capacitors that are shorted hopefully when I get to the shorted component the voltage will be a very low reading so we'll we'll do that and see what we find now that I have my 1.5 volt supply connected when I test it at the uh, source I see the voltage is 1.0 so there's definitely something short of the ground it's already pulling the load down right at the source so we'll go through some of the capacitors and check and see what we have um, I'm pretty sure that's a capacitor. This thing has a lot of, excuse my meter wants to beep, has a lot of tantalum capacitors in here. I've checked the main power supply caps and they are checked good and the ESR is very low. So we're going to check some transistors that's in this circuit and see what we come in. We'll start at Q14 on the collector and we have 1.0 volts. That's about the same as the supply. We'll also go over to Q12 on the collector and check there. And we're showing about 213 millivolts. It seems to be getting closer because it's really dragging the voltage down. We'll run a few more, check the gate of Q10. And we're at 1.08 millivolts. So we'll go to Q8 and check the collector on around Q8. And at about a half a volt. So it really seems that somewhere around Q12 
12. The voltage really seems to be dropping, so we'll go back and check that on the collector again. And again, we're about 240 millivolts. So, I'm going to expect that something up around Q12 that is causing the issue that's pulling the uh, voltage to ground. I'm back on the schematic and I'm looking at transistor Q12 and the collector follows down and you can see here's the minus 15 volt rail and here it comes up through a zener diode I think it's a 7.5 and through a resistor and then to the collector of Q12 I'm starting to suspect something right here is causing the problem I do see a 10 UF capacitor here going to ground and we also have to wonder about that uh, 7.5 volt zener diode I've located those components on the board and they're right up near the front and you see that's C15 which is a tantalum capacitor and then right below that is a zener diode is ZD4 that is a 7.5 volt zener diode and as I zoomed in on it I noticed something let me get the focus right here there in the diode you can notice that it's cracked so that's telling me that there's definitely something has uh, caused the circuit to fail and the magic smoke has escaped the diode I have now removed the bad zener diode and when I checked I still had a short to ground so I was looking C15 which was a tandem capacitor had also shorted so I replaced that with electric leaded and installed a new 7.5 volt zener diode I've checked the capacitor and it's showing up as a resistor at 1.4 ohms I now have the unit hooked to my oscilloscope and we'll fire it up and see if we get anything. Indicators come on. And we'll look at the scope. Alright. We'll bring the frequency down. Change the volts per division. And the unit is now putting out a single. The sine wave, square wave, triangle wave. So the unit is now working. And I'll probably go in and check a few more of them tantalum capacitors. And replace the filter capacitors in the power supply. Since uh, they're probably 35, 40 years old. Even though they do check good, I like to go ahead and replace them. I hope this helped you a little bit. I know I haven't seen one of these on YouTube before. Any type of repair on it. So I uh, just want to show you those steps on how you can troubleshoot with a battery. A constant coat uh, load power supply would have been nice to have. But doesn't everybody have that? So have a good one in 73s. And as always, if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. See you next time.